Today I'm joined by Turendi Martina. Turendi has been nominated by Christian Taylor in a previous episode. Turendi is a quadruple Olympian, four Olympic participations and reached six Olympic finals. Welcome to Randy. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> hey, Turendi, you are famous for being an entertaining guy. I had Donovan Bailey here and he said he was always happy. I have seen Usain Bolt is always up for a joke. Is there a relationship between funny guy and running fast? Yeah, there might be. They 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 pretty fast too, so <laughs> uh, there might be a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Trendy, how did you get into track and field sprinting? Um, yeah, when I was little, I'm uh yeah, mom from Curacao, born in Curacao. So there in like when I was six or seven, I had to do a, a, a 3k for school, I remember. And that was my first medal. I got third in that in that race. But then I didn't join no team. I didn't worry with running. I just had to do it from school. And I was doing baseball, football. I was good in volleyball too. Was in a team, Warwaru. Was team captain and everything. Was going very good. But in uh, fifth grade, we did a five camp, they call it. So you do five uh, events and running Running was also included, and I did very good that first year. And they asked me if I wanted to join a team. But I was in volleyball. It was going good. I didn't worry much. Like, I won all my events. So then the next year in sixth grade, I did it again. And then they say, I, they say, I think you really need to, like, join a team and see how it goes. If you don't like it, then you stop. And, yeah, you're doing volleyball too anyway, so you can continue with that. So I joined a team, and then when I joined the team, the first year I went to Aruba, I remember, and uh, we ran like a, a four by 60 or 80 it was, and I, we got third or second. So I was like, so oh, with running, I can go to other places, and it's fun. You know, it's a team thing. A break team, four by, four by like the relays team, and then by myself I run pretty fast too. So I was like, mm, I'm gonna stay in the team and see how far it, I'm gonna go. And from there it started. Then I had to choose between volleyball and running because I couldn't do both of them with each other and go into school too. So then I end up running. <laughs> cool. At what age did you take it really serious? Um, at 14, 15, uh, I really, I had to like choose an event to do because when, once I started by nine or 10 years, you start doing everything like 60 meter. Once you get bigger, you do 80, you do, throw, you throw ball, you do, um, a long jump, high jump, long distance. So I had to do all of them. And then by 14 year, 15 year, you, you got to choose what you're going to be specialized in and I was a good sprinter. So then I choose sprinting and then it start getting more serious because that's all you're gonna focus on. Get yeah. good all the block and run fast. So yeah, by that age you start you start focusing more on that. Yeah. And then at the age of 20 you participated in your first Olympics, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. In your life as an athlete, what was your darkest moment? Darkest moment? I think it's every time you get an injury, it's a dark moment because that's, that's the worst thing in track and field. You don't want that. And then every time you get it, it's like, ah, uh, you got to take the whole process to, to recover and then like step back. And then you got to work hard to come back. So I think all the times you get an injury, it's, it's hard. How do you recover from these injuries? I mean, physically, but then also if it's dark mentally, how do you recover? Yeah, you got to stay positive and, and, and really work on getting better. Don't think about the negative because if you think about the negative, you're using your energy the wrong way. So it's really focusing on the good and keep working on the good. Keep, keep saying you're going to get better. It's going to be good and, and you're going to get there and, and, and do what you got to do at the end of the day. Yeah. 
In the Olympic final 2008, in the 200 meters, initially you came second, but then what happened? There was a lane, something? Um, yeah, 2008 in the 200 final, um, uh, yeah, I got second. And then after all that I went through, after an hour and a half or so, they up, we had to get the medal first. But then it took long, like they delay, delay, delay it. And then they say they're going to do it the next day. And going through the press, then I heard, yeah, they say I stepped on the line and I got disqualified. So then I heard the whole thing and everything. So, yeah. yeah. What was your best moment? My, what, what, um, my whole career or, or, or at that game? Oh, In your whole career. I had a lot of a lot of good moments, a lot of them. Like all, all my Olympics, for me, they are good moments. Also, European Championships too. I won a couple of them in Amsterdam, self in front of everybody. So so I have a lot of good moments in track and field. <laughs> That's cool. Out of the four Olympic participations, which one was the sweetest one? Ah, oh. oh, that's a good question. I think I think eight and eight and twelve, both of them. I gotta go with both of them. <laughs> to Randy, if you could travel back in time, 10, 15, maybe 20 years, what advice would you give a younger to Randy? Yeah, just just take take good care of yourself. And uh I'm, I'm I get your treatments, stay on top of your body, and if you can look what you get into your body too, like 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 um uh, food and everything and get the right vitamins and stuff then 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 you'll be good to go because because at that age you you talented you can do it but then those extra things that help you need to do it from early not later when you know more things just trying to get on top of it right away and and get advantage of that when did you get on top of it um uh Yeah, it was more by um, 2000, my third Olympic, close to that. Then you, you, you know more, you hear more, and then, and then you start getting more attention to all those things around yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, you participated at the 2004 Olympics and 2008 Olympics for the Netherlands Antilles and yeah. 2012 and 16 for the Netherlands. Yes. How come? Um, uh, first, I was running for, yeah, I'm born in Curacao. And then when for the international meets, we had to run on the Netherlands Antilles because we belong in the Netherlands Antilles at the time. And then 10, 10, 10, it, uh, the Netherlands Antilles dissolved. There's, it wasn't, it didn't exist no more. Okay. And From that day, since I have Dutch passport, I had to run for Netherlands. So that's that's where the switch came. Okay. Yeah. And did I understand correctly at the 2004 Olympics, you were the flag bearer also for the Antilles? Yeah, 2004 and 2008. Okay, both years. Okay, cool. Yeah, both years. Yeah. How was that? Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's unexplainable. It's a great feeling. It's a great feeling. <laughs> I believe that. Yeah. What are the habits that make you a successful athlete and person? Um, I think you, your, your routine, like what you do daily, like if you stick to it, like, like the plan to get to the goal, then it makes you successful. If you keep going here and there, here and there, here and there, you won't get where you got to go. If you walk on that way, as straight as possible you get there faster so so i think that's 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 the thing you you daily routine you got to be disciplined and 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 do what you got to do very diligent yeah. yeah and you mentioned you want to stay on that way sometimes it's difficult to see the way ahead of you huh how do you stay on track yeah it's, it's just keep working on the goal that you have like like no matter what Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you get you get an injury and then you're like, oh, how am I gonna get there? I'm not working towards there. But it's like you're going a step backwards, but then you gotta use that to bring you maybe 10 steps further down the road. That's 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 how I think sometimes when you get injuries too. Because when you get injury, 
and you're not running no more and you're gonna work on you you still working out you're still doing other things getting your body good and other areas maybe that you needed it and then once you get good you're stronger and better to go forward so that's that's all you got to do it okay do you have a morning routine a morning i, I before i get up from my bed i pray that's that's my morning routine i pray and then take a shower eat and then get ready to go to practice yeah how do you prepare yourself for important moments i it, it's it's yeah i say most of the the job is already done in practice the day of the competition you got to execute um you got to just just do it execute just do it so uh, m most of the time you're ready you're good to go it's just stay patient just really think on what you really got to do and just do it at a time so so it, it's it's already done i'm ready to go it's not much much more to do <laughs> it's executing the plan yeah executing the plan yeah yeah As we said, you participated in four Olympic Games. You reached six Olympic finals over three Olympic Games. When you step in that stadium for an Olympic final, how do you prepare for that? Yeah, it's it's trying to stay calm. That's the most, most important thing, trying to stay calm so you can do what you came to do. Because if you're not calm, you're nervous, and then you're thinking about a lot of things, then it might not go the way you want it to go. So it's, it's, it's trying anything to get you calm, like get your calmness and then be ready to go. What do you do to stay calm? It, it depends. My first, I remember 2008 or 2004 was my first time. I didn't know what was, why, what I'm, what I'm going to get or nothing. So it was more, yeah, okay, let's do this. And then you learn from that. You learn from what you did there, how you did everything. And then like 2008, when I was nervous and stuff, I remember there was flower next to the, where we had to go on the track was the daily flower on the ground there. And I looked at the flowers and trying to calm myself and it helped. So that helped me. But I don't know if it's going to help somebody else, but I know that helped me, keep me calm to go in and do what I have to do. Yeah. Yeah. And did this preparation or did it change over the years? So were you less nervous in 2016, for example, since it's your third Olympics or fourth Olympics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm less nervous because I know, I know what, I, what I came to do and, and I did it already one time. So you more prepared, ready to go, and uh, and also um, as the as the years go by, you learn how to keep yourself calm, what you got to do by yourself without needing a flower to look at, for example. <laughs> so yeah, those those things. Yeah. How do you overcome setbacks? Yeah, it's, it's stay positive, stays positive because it's already a negative thing. And if you stay on top and stay on it and keep thinking about it, then you're not working to get better. You you stay on the negative part. And it's very important to only think positive. Then you're doing good. Then then you 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 thinking about getting better. If you think keep thinking about the injury, then the injury is gonna stay there and it's not gonna get good. So you gotta think on healing already, getting better. How am I gonna get better? Okay, we gotta do this, we gotta do this. Just keep your mind busy with doing everything to get better, and then you're good to go. And when negative thoughts creep into your head, what do you do? You're trying to block it right away, trying <laughs> to block it and, and, and think about the positive because it is it is hard. They're trying to creep because that's how we work, that's how human bodies work. Everything trying to work against you too, and and not all the time you're gonna think only the good things because the bad things do happen it's life but you got to block it out and keep thinking positive good who is your role model and why who is my role model <laughs> my role model was michael johnson when i started to run and all that and then after that it's myself like i did i did everything i had to do to get to where i'm at right now and and i'm my own hero I'm on here. <laughs> yeah. Cool. 
to Randy. We have all somewhat admired Usain Bolt for his achievements. You ran mm -hmm. against him a couple of times. How's yeah. the experience of running against him? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great experience for sure. He's he a great runner. I know him since 2003. We've been running against each other till he stopped. And uh, yeah, he's, he's, he got everything to, that, that made him the way he, the, the athlete he, he, he was. So he, he, did, he did very good. He, he was tall and he, he, everything worked perfectly for him. And he, he trained hard too, as we can see the times we couldn't see. So it, it, it was great always running against him. Yeah. What is the best advice you received and who gave it to you? I think, I think best advice is um, that I have, to be, I have to be patient when I'm getting all the blocks. So that, that, that getting all the block, you have to be patient. You don't have to rush it. And it was coach um, uh, Calvin Robinson told me that. Okay. Yeah. How does a typical training day look like in a sprinter's life? It depends on the, on, the, on the part that you had in the season. Because, yeah, in fall training, you, you got to run more than when you're in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, in the season, like when you're sprinting. It's, 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 it's less, less long running and more sprinting. So it depends on the, on the, on the year, like which, which part of the year you're in. Then you really, you're doing more long runs and like tech, really technical things, but working on getting stronger and getting faster at the first part of the season and then the second part of the season you start tapering down getting faster working on the blocks and all that so it depends on the on the on the on the where we are in the year okay cool we're getting to the end of the interview do you want to nominate someone to be interviewed who um, uh, nominate someone to be interviewed. Mm. I think if, yeah, I think Eugene Bolt or Asafa Powell, one of them two, I think, if you can get them, yeah. That'd that be is, very that would be really cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on in the life of Turendi Martina at this moment in time? Yeah, it's just like everybody, just trying to deal as calm as possible with this whole COVID situation, <laughs> staying positive, working hard still, and hopefully we still have our uh, Olympic this year, 2021, so we can uh, just uh, run, just have fun there too, like the other ones. Cool. Where can people find you? Where can people find me? Yeah, people can find me on uh, social media. That's the easiest way. Instagram, Martina200M. That's my Twitter, Snapchat too. And on Facebook, I'm uh, Shirani Martina Official. That's my page. And uh, Shirani Martina, I'm, uh, yeah, that's my Facebook, the normal Facebook. So there's, there's where people can find me. Really cool. Shirani, thanks a lot for your time. That was awesome. Yeah, thank you a lot. Thank you a lot. It's a pleasure for me. Thank you.